On this episode of Law Weekly, we focus on the changing face of legal practice. We talk to the chairman of the section on business law, SBL, of the Nigerian Bar Association. We also have a feature on oral advocacy in Nigeria, plus our recap of the top trend in legal stories. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shieli. The global evolution of legal practice, the future of the profession, innovative trends, and the impact of disruptive technology on the practice are some issues bordering lawyers in the country today. But how prepared are Nigerian lawyers to deal with these issues? My guest is the chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association section on business law and the vice chair West Africa of the International Bar Association's Africa Regional Forum. He has over two decades of experience advising clients on various aspects of Nigerian corporate and commercial law. In this interview with Mr. Olumide Akwata, we focus on some of these subject matters. What is the phase of the Nigerian legal practice? What is it evolving to? And what do lawyers ultimately want it to be? This was the first question I put to the chairman of the SBL. I think when lawyers speak in those terms, they're just referring to how things have changed in the way law as a profession is practiced. I mean, um, pardon the cliche, we belong to a global village. So we get to see how things are done. We, we get to see how things are done in other jurisdictions. We have colleagues all over the world. We attend conferences. So we see that um, our, sometimes our perception of how law should be practiced, uh, sometimes it may not be in tandem or in step with what is going on in other jurisdictions. And so sometimes it's good to, and it's not everything you take wholesale and you import, but it's also good to check out to see what others are doing and find out what global best, best practice is right now in the practice of law. Because we serve, we are serving pretty much the same clients. And the client is sophisticated, you know, are getting more and more sophisticated. So you want to be sure that uh, your, your, your service offering is at par with, with what obtains everywhere. So that's the change, I think. You talked about being in tandem with global best practices. What are the shortcomings that you have identified here? Specialization, for example, is not really a front burner for, for us here. And I'm not going to apportion blame because um, we are the product of our own environment. Our environment tends to dictate the way we, uh, we conduct our affairs. So it may not make commercial sense at the moment for the Nigerian lawyer to zero in on one or two areas of law and decide to be the, uh, uh, be the expert there because he may, go very, he may go hungry very quickly, uh, particularly if it's an area where uh, there's not much uh, activity. Having said that, uh, um, it's important to look at how other jurisdictions have evolved, evolved how they, be, they got to the point where you have specialists, you have those who they've emphasized on specialization. And I always use the example from, uh, from, from medicine. You know, today a pediatrician is not a gynecologist, and we know that. And so uh, I think we, we know that in our profession, we are going to get to the point where the entertainment lawyer is not a litigator, or the entertainment lawyer is not a mining lawyer. Today, we pretty much tend to do everything. It's not sustainable. So that is one aspect of the practice of law that we must begin to look at closely. I mean, it's nothing new, what I'm saying, inshallah. It's nothing new. We've been saying this for a while. I think we'll be paying, we'll, we've been paying lip service to it. Now it's time to actually do the needful and begin to groom. If, if some of us are already gone past our sell by date, maybe we should focus on the younger generation, the lawyers coming behind us, and begin to channel them down these routes where they know that you can be a generalist to a certain degree. However, it will, it will be very, it will be profitable for you if you hone your skills in one or two areas and be known for, uh, that, uh, for those areas. Then uh, you talk about scaling up, uh, scale. Yes, there's room for the small boutique law firm, absolutely. But there's also something to be said about uh, the large law firms and capacity. So, whereas the Nigerian law firms, those at the high end in terms of size, are still a little bit far away from 100 uh, lawyers in-house, um, our counterparts in, in the city, in London, or, uh, they, they crossed the 3,000, some of them have crossed the 3,000 threshold a long time ago. 
And then we want to compete with them for the same kind of work. They pitch to NMPC for work, and I pitch to NMPC for work. They can turn around, turn around a mandate or an instruction in 20 minutes because they have capacity. I'm not even talking now about intellectual capacity because I'm for, I'm, I can assure you that Nigerian lawyers can stand shoulder to shoulder with lawyers from around the world. But sometimes these things go beyond what you know. But how well oiled your machinery is, how your backroom office is, and how quickly you can respond. And you know, response time is also a critical aspect of what we do. And so the guy from Clifford Chance can turn it around in 20, 20 minutes, and then somebody, the, the John Okoro and Co. here, who is giving the same assignment, he's smart, he can do it but he's probably going to take a couple of days because of scale. So that's another area we want to look at, you know. It's, a, it's an ongoing argument. There are those who believe that size is not important, but hey, and you know, we, 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 the conversation is ongoing. And the fact that we're talking about it is good. So I hear you talk about specialization. I hear you talk about scaling up and globalization of legal services. And you've also said that we seem to be paying lip service to these issues. So what's stifling or injuring us from, you know, achieving um, the face that we want and what reforms must we put in place? It's one thing to say specialize, but you need to be trained. You need to get the training. So today, uh, I, take a, I use entertainment law as an example. To the best of my knowledge, it's not being taught at university level or at, uh, at the law school. Meanwhile, we have a burgeoning entertainment industry that is supposed to be contributing a, a huge percentage to GDP. And so, so my problem is, are we not, don't we understand what is going on? You know, in the past we complained about the oil and gas sector, how uh, we were not, at, we were not in, at the commanding uh, heights of the sector as far as being an operator or even being a legal advisor. We, but we, over time we've managed to uh, pick up the skills and then you have uh, very, very formidable oil and gas lawyers in Nigeria today. But it was a painful process. So you, so you ask yourself, okay, we have another 